the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Tuesday, August 27th, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, back in the building. Lots to talk about, but not a lot of voice left. Jason has... <laughs> I might or might not have over-screamed at the live show. You always do this. And uh, every live show we've ever had, you remind yourself mentally beforehand, don't destroy my voice running out on stage and then uh, I, I don't know how it happens man yeah, i mean i well, literally i'm backstage we're about to go out and i'm telling myself i'm not gonna do it this year <laughs> i'm not I'm, I'm and then i go out and i think i am being conscious of it like i i when i was out there i have pictures of you that say otherwise <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah no that's i mean it's a fact because i just i black out uh, I scream hard, and then I'm, and then you I can't some, talk anymore. He did some things with the um, t-shirt gun. If he was firing, he was all firing cylinders. on all. I mean, you jumped and did a splits thing in the air, which I'm sure extreme athleticism. Yeah, I mean, it was uh, it was a good time. So um, hopefully, you got to watch the Megala show over on YouTube and take in some of uh, Jason's adventures on stage. The big headline today, the big reminder, because there is still time left, the uh, the Megalobowl is open, available. Uh, I just got a count this morning. 12,962 oh. of you so far have joined the Megalobowl. So um, play with us. Come be in leagues with us. Their drafts will be going from the end of the month, August 31st through September 4th. So you go to Megalobowl.com. There is the link there if you're in the Foot Clan to sign up for your draft slot on Sleeper, and then you'll you'll have your draft time established. Do that draft, play in the league. The league is going to be awesome this year. We've made a lot of improvements. It's our league of record scoring setting, so you're going to play exactly how we play. Half of you get in the playoffs, and then whoever wins, whoever wins, you are in the listener league next year with us and you also get an ultimate tier membership for the rest of your natural life so it's a pretty cool prize we had over twenty five thousand competing last year we're at twelve thousand nine hundred so far so go over to megalobowl.com and join us in the largest most fun league out there the tournament style super league called the megalobowl you can follow the show over on X at the FF Ballers to be kept apprised of everything going on here, along with breaking news, some of which I know Mike and I will be very excited to talk about today. Yes. That happened yesterday. And um, the community, as always, the Foot Clan Mighty and Strong is over at jointhefoot.com. Welcome to the Waiver Wire. Presented by NFL Sunday Ticket on YouTube TV. Well, I am excited to talk about all five of these names. We're jumping into the waiver wire before the season begins, looking at some undrafted gems, as we like to call them, or players you should be very aware of. Maybe they're drafted. Maybe they're drafted late. Maybe they're not. And um, we got some clarity in a few situations this weekend which leads into some of these names. I'm going to start with a player that I have been propping up. Uh, feels like by myself for a while, but Chuba Hubbard, mm. the running back of the Carolina Panthers, who was the running. Excuse me, I sir. Think, uh, yeah, Mike, you've been, you've, you've been at. It's really the, the at worst neutral. It's, it's been Mr. Jay Brooks over here telling us how great of a draft pick this guy who's going to, not play at least four games is going to be sitting on your bench. It's yeah, true. Chuba Hubbard it was not just the de facto accidental starter. He's He was the player that averaged over 13 fantasy points a game for a six-week stretch to end the year last year with an offense that I think is going to be a little bit fixed in part due to Dave Canales, in part due to the addition of 
Deontay Johnson and uh, Bryce Young looked very good this weekend. But Chuba Hubbard's the starter. And uh, Jonathan Brooks, as Mike's alluded to, he's going to be on the PUP for at least four weeks. So a Chuba Hubbard needs to be paid attention to in the same, in my opinion, in the exact same breath of the, you know, the Zach Moss conversations. Ooh, that's that, that's mighty high praise. Yeah. I would, I'd put him more in the uh, the Jerome Ford conversation of, but – Look, the, that six weeks. Sure. The six week stretch was was great, uh, and he will have at least four weeks to uh, to be like that. Just a supplemental running back for you. Should you go real heavy wide receiver, Chuba will be there for you late in drafts to to be that RB two for four weeks as and you try to figure out who's going to be permanent. Because Chuba is not a permanent solution. Jonathan, for, for your fantasy team, right? For your fantasy team, I don't think for for season long because Jonathan Brooks. We'll come back eventually. The question for Brooks is: Does he does he take over the volume, or is he slowly worked in and it's a time show? That's why I mean, what I mean by it's not permanent. Where once Brooks is back, it's going to be messy in a in a timeshare. Yeah, I, mean, I, I don't mind at all taking Chuba Hubbard at the end of your drafts, or if you've already finished your draft, swapping him out if you need. Especially, I mean, we talk about if you went zero RB, or if you if you don't have starting running backs. Because you were a little bit risky up top, Chuba should be able to get off to a to a hot start. He is it. Jerome Ford is the perfect comp because we got word that Nick Chubb is also on the PUP. Chuba Hubbard, like we give that six game sample, but if you actually look at the majority of the season from week week six on, he was on pace for over a thousand yards, ninety percent of his passes. He can catch the football, um, seven touchdowns in that anemic offense. Um, it was pretty good. It was over. It was double digits. That's that's how Mike had often described right. Jerome Ford. Was like he's going to get you double digits. Yeah. It seems like that's on the table for Chuba Hubbard. Uh, we also got the release of Samaj P. Ryan in Denver, which means the, the impending. Yeah. The, well, yeah, they're going to release him if they can't find a trade for nothing. Um, Audric Estime and Jaleel McLaughlin. McLaughlin mm -hmm. last year, five point four yards a carry, uh, sixth best in missed tackles force per touch and caught a bunch of passes. So McLaughlin and then Estime is their fifth-round draft pick who they have confidence in. Both of those players are very interesting late in drafts. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm trying to ask myself, like, which one would I rather take the shot on with Samaj P. Ryan not being there? And I I think I lean towards McLaughlin. I, I know, Mike, you were higher on Audric Estime than, than I was, I think, than both Andy and I in the draft process. But I just look at Samaj, he caught 50 passes last year. Yeah. So there is there's going to be room for a pass catching back and even though Estime will have, you know, the goal line opportunity, he is always like from day 1, Sean Payton has talked about Estime as well, he's a first and second down back. He's he's their big bruising back and they're going to use him, but I think I'm wanting to soak up the targets um, you know, that uh, that are vacated here from Samaj P. Ryan. Yeah, McLaughlin will have the standalone value where Estime, he's probably just an insurance back for Javante, which it's a – even look, the, the Denver Broncos offense is not <laughs> inspiring for fantasy football, but the running backs, just the whole group of them, they're going to catch so many passes because that's what Sean Payton does. It looks like that's what Bo Nix is going to be perfectly fine – moving forward with so McLaughlin has standalone value where if Javante should miss time I think Estime will be a, a real serious pickup and then one more name I want to bring up for sure is Isaiah Likely the Baltimore tight end this is a team that has uh, yeah. a great deal of need in the passing game for reliable weapons Mark Andrews we brought it up uh, at the live show he has started as the tight end two three consecutive years through the first six weeks the last two years he has precipitously dropped. He's been outside the top 20 at the tight end position from week seven on over the last two years, which you can blame on injury because that is a fair thing to blame it on, but it's still been a pattern. So Isaiah likely came in. Well, speaking of injury, I mean, right now, Mark Andrews is right. not on the field. The The Baltimore Ravens play the first game of the NFL That's season. A good point. They have the least amount of time for him to get healthy. And this is one of those like, if you were later in your drafts and you grab Pat Fryermuth, or even even if you even if you're the guy that has um, you know David Njoku or Ferguson, for me, if I'm that type of, I've got that tight end on my roster, I'm gonna drop one of my dispensable last round picks and I'm gonna pick up Isaiah Likely 
because likely when Mark Andrews is out is awesome. And if I get to have that, to look, it's stupid, it's silly, but we do this for fun. When the when the ball is kicked <laughs> off, right, right, right. I want players in that game, and if Mark Andrews isn't there, and I could put Isaiah Likely into my lineup and watch and enjoy, I'm I'm definitely doing that. I, it's more than fun. I mean, if Isaiah like if if Andrews is out, I would rather play Isaiah Likely. I think for a couple weeks over probably so, over Ferguson. So I mean, Mark Andrews, what is his consensus ranking on our website right now? I got um, the tight end position. I haven't moved him yet. It's no, we haven't moved him down. The news is just that he's Dealing with still not practicing. Minor. Yeah. So you two have him at number two. I have him at five. You know, the question is where would you know if he was out for the year, where would Isaiah likely slide in? And I, I think he would be competitive with Dalton Kincaid for yeah, probably top six for, for that spot. So yeah, it, it's a good name to bring up ahead of that first week game. He was the tight end three from week fourteen on last year when he got that opportunity, fifty six yards a game. So. um yeah, Pretty I mean, important, it, and he's still out today. So uh, Mark Andrews is. So. I expect Andrews to play, but you know, if if Andrews is back um, on the field you, tomorrow, whatever, then then drop likely and and move forward with whatever tight end you had. But just hold on to him for now. All right. Thanks again to NFL Sunday Ticket on YouTube TV. Watch every game every Sunday when you bundle NFL NFL Sunday Ticket and YouTube TV. Sign up today at youtube.com slash fantasy footballers, local and national games on YouTube TV. NFL Sunday ticket for out of market games excludes the digital only games, device and content restrictions apply. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Oh, we did it. C.D. Lamb and the Cowboys have agreed to a You mean I did four it. Year, oh, <laughs> sure. You take all your contracts and add them up. They're probably not even the one contract that I got my guy. Now, see, he's my keeper, Mike, in League of Record. You don't know this, but it was me again. Uh, four years. Gosh darn it. $136 million, $100 million guaranteed. Get Ayuk a contract, man. And so C.D. Lamb is... Uh, Get him he a got, team first. He got paid, so... That's good news. We can uh, rest easy. We've got some time before the season, and CeeDee Lamb will be back out there soaking up um, so many targets. I think it's worth noting as well that Jamar Chase, while not getting the money, he has been practicing. He's been on the field. So, he, yeah, I mean, that the, the worry to me with, with Lamb, Ayuk, and Chase has just been, are they are they going to be not, not necessarily out of shape? They're – I don't think they can get out of shape. But, you know, like when you're not going full speed and then you snap your fingers and you're at game speed, yeah. I worry about the hamstrings. Yeah, yes. some injuries. And then uh, just what you wanted here, Mike, the Cowboys are hosting Dalvin Cook for a visit, <laughs> which, uh, you know, you'd say, hey, that doesn't really impact the depth chart unless your depth chart already has Ezekiel Elliott and Rico Dowdle and unproven players sure. uh, at this stage of their careers. So, if Dalvin Cook does sign a contract and factor into a very dumb, dumb committee, you're starting to feel like Baltimore a couple years ago. Could be. Where, you know, what was it? Uh, Devonta Freeman and Latavius Murray mm -hmm. and Le Lev Bell were a trifecta for Baltimore. Mm -hmm. And they're just fighting their way through the season with that. It would, you know, people. some people like Royce Freeman. Like, who's involved in that offense? That's four names that are, you know, we're all – draft picks yep. 15 years ago I mean, it, it, the Cowboys depth chart remains ambiguous even like if they have Dalvin Cook this doesn't change my upside stance for Rico Suave uh, Dalvin Cook has been available to NFL teams uh all year long and this is like at the end of August here coming in right before the season starts that's not the biggest threat like as I mean like it's not going to be Dalvin Cook. Here are some players uh, to add to the list we mentioned earlier that will start the year on the PUP and missed at least four games. Nick Chubb, four-game PUP at least. Uh, Jonathan Brooks, TJ Hawkinson, and then uh, Keaton Mitchell, who had a, a brief moment last year in, in Baltimore, and then a major injury. Tyler Higby had the major injury, and then Kendrick Bourne as well in New England. So opportunities – like New England is, um, they're a really interesting situation because it seems like Drake May is emerging as a 
favorite to start. And then Jalen Polk, who I think is very talented, seems like he's going to have an opportunity early with Kendrick Bourne on the shelf. And, you know, this is a team that let go of Juju. So they're moving forward with the youth movement. They're only projected to win four games by Vegas. So, you know, if, if you're the Patriots and it's about experience, it, it's interesting to see, you know, Jalen Polk to start the year. Yeah, I, I, I like Jalen Polk a lot. I was caping for him pretty hard during the, the rookie draft process. Yeah, it's going to take some time. You know, he has been he's been playing with the twos. Like they're it's they're really making him earn it the Patriot way. So I, it could take a few weeks. But so I'm saying, if you're drafting Polk, you're you're going to be need to be patient. I think it might take a couple weeks. They have not named the starting quarterback though, right? Correct. I I loved the quote from Drod Mayo just recently of saying at the, like he said quote it's a true competition. And I would say at this current point, Drake has outplayed Jacoby, which at this current point is when you have to name a starter. <laughs> like, isn't that saying well, that? Yeah, there's, there's another headline that basically said, yeah, May has outplayed Jacoby, but other things factor in. I'm like, yes. what factors what, what in else? other would, than playing football? Uh, the What also factors in is that their offensive line is bad. Like, Jacoby Brissett, part of this – discussion is Jacoby Brissett got dropped on his shoulder in a preseason game because the offensive line is so brutal so it's uh, there is I think something fair of don't put the number three pick out there to be the sacrificial baby for the New England Patriots let let a veteran be out there try and calm some things down before you get him in but it it's still up in the air uh, we mentioned the Broncos are expected to move on from Samaj P. Ryan, but they're also expected to move on from wide oh. receiver Tim Patrick. This Fireball Jones. Weird. So wild because he had a great preseason. He looked like the number two target. Yeah. Had, he, he had established himself, had a good connection even with Bo Nix. And then it's like, and we're done. I don't blame them in the sense that, you know, he's he's still got a bigger contract. He's not the future. This is a. Uh, youthful rebuilding Broncos team and if they could get something for Tim Patrick on the market I would do that if I was the Broncos I don't think they're going to get anything on the, I don't I don't know that someone's going to trade for him but yeah, it, it is a surprise it is and um what else do we have going on Marshawn, Marshawn Lloyd, Lloyd expected news. to be on IR to start the year with the hamstring it has been from the moment of the draft every day it's a little worse for Marshawn Lloyd yeah um but they also have A.J. Dillon, who was held out last week due to a stinger, who is the second role in the running back room, had that injury last year. And suddenly you're starting to talk about, in deep leagues, Emmanuel Wilson. Oh, because, yeah, we are. Because, um, you know, he's he's next man up, and he was 11 for 52 on the ground in the final preseason game. And you're talking about Josh Jacobs. I mean, yep. one of the reasons I had been against Josh Jacobs is how adamant – this coaching staff has always been that he employs a committee. Well, if you don't have other healthy backs, you sometimes your hand is forced. Like Josh Jacobs can start the year. He was a hot starter. We just talked about that on a recent show. And if he starts the year getting a large volume while they're waiting for these backs to come healthy for a great offense, like he might be he might be real good. He real, was, real good. He was the number one running back in all of football last year on percentage of his team's carries. So when you talk about capability to a workload, number one, teams are willing to give him everything, and he's able to handle everything. That's one of the big discussions. It's not today's not the day, but when you look at, you know, we look at the yards per carry and the efficiency on that team, but there should be some additional math done based on workhorse running backs it's not a surprise that julia mclaughlin's at 5.4 a carry sure. or devon a chance at eight or well we that's a surprise we yeah, had or eight's, eight's pretty high or lamar <laughs> miller was at six before he became a workhorse you know there are there's nick chubb and jamal charles and then the rest of them don't really do right that over 300 carries and when you look and you say josh jacobs gets every carry of every down of every situation on a team that had no offense Obviously, the Packers, who have a great deal of trust in their team building, looked at Josh Jacobs and didn't go, well, let's just hyper-focus on his efficiency numbers right there. 
They didn't. They went out and gave him the bag to be hit the, the running back. And and the confidence level is not in, wow, did he, you know, given the, when they're stacking the box against Aiden O'Connell and he runs for one yard, it's all his fault. That's not how the team looks at it. And I think it'd be educational, I think, on some degree to look at workhorse and, you know, just total carries, short yardage, goal line. If you score from the one, it's one a carry. Sure. Right? I mean, all those things factor in, and he gets a ton of those opportunities too. So I'm not just speaking about Josh Jacobs. I'm speaking about anybody who gets massive workload, and it looks like – I mean, Rashad White got everything for that team with a bad offensive line. The team has a different view than we do on that number. I'm, I'm just bringing that up. Um, Chiefs signed Juju, bringing him back. He knows the offense. They do this all the That's time. Fine. They bring back guys that yeah. – you know, McCall Hardman came back. Mike Williams returning to team drills, and we had Jameer Gibbs back at practice, Laporta back at practice, Najoku back to practice, um, and the only one that wasn't Mike, Jalen Waddell, who no, was no. – he, he was, was seen. He's in a non-contact you, jersey. You couldn't miss him. He's at practice. You couldn't miss him because he's wearing a bright red jersey that says, don't hit me. What? Here's a – What? Yeah, he has a uh, – What is happening? That's red. The, the panic alarm is red too. What do you mean? What's happening? This is Jalen Waddle's entire career. Oh, it is not. He his plays entire career. Well, I don't know if you noticed. Half yeah, the games last year, he actually wore the red non-contact jersey out onto the field on accident. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. <laughs> no, you can't touch me. Um, yeah, I mean, having uh, having he, had the Waddle experience all year last year, he doesn't miss the games, but he misses parts of all Last the games year. he played and this year he played 16 games as a rookie played the entire season the next year two out of three years it, he, i'm just talking about two out of three plays i'm not talking <laughs> about the guy you know it you why he goes out injured every he, fourth play and then he's year, back yes. last year that did happen but i'm i'm saying more of what is happening of like knee soreness where, back soreness concussion you know it, it's it's undisclosed it, it was an undisclosed injury and it, it like where are the beat reporters out of Miami when this is like really starting to take off? Like, there's it was just whispers. You know, it, it's not if the superstar wide receiver on any other team is missing that much practice. I feel like reporters should be able to be saying very loud, "Hey guys, he's not here." They're used to it. <laughs> They're too used to it. They're like, "This is look." Not I, news. I've had the same. I had the same experience. It was very, very frustrating. And some players, for some reason, they just get banged up. I hope that's not the case. I hope that's not his story moving forward. Feels like, you know, we need some a long stretch of healthy games. All right, that was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. We'll take a break, and we're coming back with a brand new segment, boys. It's going to be fun. All right, we are um, – I feel like we almost had a consensus uh, level of embarrassment moving Josh Jacobs higher and higher in our rankings as, as things work in his direction. He was a player that didn't get a lot of love from this show early on. But we are talking about players that we um, we might not want to admit that we're kind of into this year. <laughs> Players, we're embarrassed to love. Andy, why don't you start us off with Tank Bigsby? Um, that's not one of them. Sorry. Did you or did you not just this morning draft Tank Bigsby? I did draft. <laughs> I did draft Tank Bigsby. It was. Uh, let's go ahead and qualify that really quickly. No, no, no. Move on. No, no, no. Let me see what round. No, we'll start it because he's on my list, Jason. Uh, oh, okay. My, maybe you should read the show doc and see what's about to happen. So he he was a fifteenth round pick for me. It was the right place. So Mike, go ahead and start. Yes, I will start with because look, watching Tank Bigsby play on an NFL field last year was embarrassing to all people who believed in him. It was embarrassing, Mister and Mrs. To, Bigsby. To were Tank also Bigsby. embarrassed. Yes, uh, anyone who was associated with Tank Bigsby last year watched what happened. And it was awful. It was the second lowest rush success rate amongst the rookie running backs. He caught one of his four targets. All of them were caught, though. 
he, does not he turned he turned many of them into interceptions somehow. Uh, but for me, for Tank Bigsby, it's going back to just what I believed in him about a when he was a collegiate prospect, collegiate prospect, and he has looked much much better in this preseason. And I will jump in before anyone else says it because yeah. He looked pretty good last preseason. Five point seven a carry last preseason. Uh, he he was excellent. Ninety seven of one hundred and five rushing yards were gained after contact. That's per Jacob Gibbs. He, it's for me about Tank Bigsby. It comes down to again. I thought he could be a good player coming into the league. The Jacksonville Jaguars also thought he could be a good player coming into the league. Spending sec, uh, day two capital on him and just saying over and over and over we don't want Travis Etienne to have to be this player he has had to be that guy for them they don't want that to be the case and looking at the rest of the roster if anyone is going to be the player that can actually spell Travis Etienne it has to be Tank Bigsby I don't know if he can do it it's embarrassing that I have to keep talking about super him. super embarrassing but I, I, I like him and I think that he could be a Huge reason why Travis Etienne is not the – it doesn't come through with his ADP. What what does that mean for drafting Tank Bigsby? Like Andy just took him in the 15th round of a best ball. That's fine. You're you're drafting the insurance running backs who, you know, if they get a week or two later in the season, then then they hit. What are you doing in redraft leagues with, with Tank Bigsby? Tank Bigsby is only an insurance draft pick. The, Blake the, Corum or Tank Bigsby in a draft? Corum. Okay. Blake Corn. This is both honestly both of my players that I'm embarrassed that I am into their their opportunity this year. It's more about what does it negatively do to the other players. What it's, was your second player? You know, it's Bucky Irving of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He was drafted in the fourth round. There's you know Bucky Irving, oh he's he's too small. He's actually like the same size as James Cook, maybe even a little bit thicker. Than, than James Cook, and he excels at pass catching. Fifty six receptions his final year at Oregon. I think that he that if Rashad White doesn't come through, it's because of Tank Big Tank Bigsby. Fifty eight percent of his runs. You this mean Bucky Irving? Sorry, thank you, Bucky Irving. Fifty eight percent of his runs runs this preseason have gone for five or more yards. Like this guy has gotten it done. Not in our news, uh, because it embarrassing to mention news. Chase Edmonds, the perceived backup for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers is expected to go on IR and miss the entire season. So if anyone is stepping up for the Bucs, it's going to be Bucky Irving. And I think that he's going to come in and make Rashad White not irre not torch him, but make it so that his ADP that you're drafting Rashad White at, you're a little bit disappointed. I feel like you're not embarrassed. Like this is embarrassed to love. These players you're embarrassed to love. I feel like that this is almost a reverse embarrassed to hate on Travis Etienne and yeah, Rashad you, White. Sure, you can look at it that way. You're like, ah, I'm down on those guys because yeah. of their backups. I watched uh, every preseason Bucky Irving snap earlier this morning, and um, Sean Tucker also had a really strong preseason. And the biggest thing with Irving's size is not to me um, that it's prohibitive for him to have a role on the offense with Rashad White healthy. It's more that taking him or believing in him I don't think that there's any chance under the sun where if Rashad White went out it's all Bucky Irving I would think it would be a committee behind them yeah I could agree um, with that you know he's he's 20 pounds under where Rashad White is a couple inches shorter and he he looked pretty good looked pretty spicy I still don't see a world like I know I'm like I've been demonstrative about Rashad White I don't see the world where the team trusts Irving above White on third down and Irving's one of his special skill sets, ironically, also one of Keyshawn Fawns, also one of Chase Edmonds, everybody that's been part of this depth in backfield. You know, Edmonds was a prolific pass catcher in Arizona. Never really came together in Tampa Bay. They're trying to find a compliment there. But um but Irving Irving seems like a very talented player. I just don't know what spelling Rashad White translates to for fantasy. I think if he does spell him as a pass catcher a little bit, you know, it's, you know, a let's say a target and a half a game end up going to Bucky. That's a big deal. Yeah, I mean, you're you're talking, you know, you're talking about twenty 
four targets that you would lose. So that's dropping you from 70 down to the Where high 40s you, or the 50s. What are your thought processes with these two guys, Jason? Because uh, Mike might be embarrassed to love them, but I would like to hear what you think. Yeah, I, I don't personally think that Bucky will uh, really spell white. They – this team views Rashad White, I believe, as their bell cow. Um, they, they drafted Bucky Irving because he's he's a talented, explosive, um, short area burst guy that I think just at value where they were in the draft and they needed depth. Um, Seems like a smart pick with Chase Edmonds being yeah, out I, on IR for the year. Probably. I, don't, I don't think it's a bad pick at all, but when push comes to shove and the games are being played, and this is also a team that is – they're not that good. But they still, as uh, they are fighting for playoffs. Obviously, they made the playoffs last year, shockingly. Um, but my, you know, they're going to want to do everything they can to retain their jobs. Like this, this staff thinks that White is their best chance to win these games. So I have a hard time believing that he's going to be pulled off the field think, when he wasn't last year. Yeah, I think the point there is great. I mean, this is a playoff team. They didn't just make it. They destroyed Philadelphia in the playoffs. That's what happened. This was not a failure of a team. This was a team that had a recipe for success that they literally spent the offseason committing money and capital to repeat. They believe that the weapon that they have is uh, the weapons that they have are what they needed to win games. So if this was a team that really needed a change, I think that would be a different discussion. I thought Rashad White was incredibly successful for this team. Yeah, he was, and it was great for fantasy, um, for sure. But and, I, I do, I do totally understand the point that what Bucky Irving does well is the exact thing that caused Rashad White to be good for fantasy. So if that does, if that is what you know is is changed, then Rashad White will be a disappointment. But I go back to the things to remember episode where it was like if someone is really good on the field, them drafting a backup is not going to pull them off. Yeah, which, but I don't apply that here. I don't. I don't look at what Rashad White did on the field last year and go, "That's an elite player." Fair. He is. He is excellent in pass catching. Absolutely. But I mean, on the ground, I, I know the Andy, you're the workhorse. You're talking about it, but for a workhorse to be under four yards, like you destroy Najee Harris as <laughs> whenever you possibly can for his inefficiency. He's you, more you he's more efficient than Rashad White on the ground. Well, but I don't question Najee Harris getting the workload in in Pittsburgh to some side backup. You know what I mean? Like Najee gets the work. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it was, sounds like you should time. love Najee. <laughs> well, I look. I I would be embarrassed to love Najee. That's yeah, for sure. It, um, and and just in, to to wrap it all up, I mean, I still have Rashad White at RB fourteen. He's being drafted as the thirteen. So this yeah, this is right. not this is not a panic alarms in the streets this is I'm looking towards the end of the season and if things go wrong for Rashad White that's that is what has happened I get it and because of the inefficiency on the ground it, his situation to me is more fragile All I right. think I think there are there are definitely people in your camp of of being very worried about Rashad White yeah I mean that that was uh I mean that was uh, us last year, and we took the L on that. So I'm going to learn. I'm going to learn uh, my lesson, and I I'll be in on White, <laughs> Barry White. That is, yes. Um, you all right, become him. Let's talk about another guy. I am embarrassed to love this guy. We, I, he's a nasty boy of summer. Another running back. Nasty. It's Zach Moss. Oh, and oh no, I have I've joked this whole off season that he's my dude, and I've always loved him. Um, if you are new to the show or you didn't understand the joke, I did not like Zach Moss as a prospect. I think that's, that's not, that's not, say, that's not telling the whole truth. I thought Zach Moss as a prospect was terrible. Yes. There we go. And I loved being proven right <clears throat> for his whole career until all of a sudden last year in, uh, you know, backup form for Jonathan Taylor. He was awesome. You know, he started the season. He was really, really good. Um, obviously, when when Jonathan Taylor came back, the whole Zach Moss experiment was over. And now he goes. He signs a new contract with the Bengals. 
He's 26 years old. He's entering his fifth year in the NFL. And I, I, I like him. I, I really, really do. I think that he's going to be the replacement of Joe Mixon. I think he fits the – Zach Moss fits the Bengals running scheme really, really well. And there's just – you know, there there's – there is um, – I think there's two camps, right? Like you're either on Chase Brown mm-hmm. or you're on Zach Moss. Right. I'm I'm on the Zach Moss side. I, I think he is the veteran that they will put in place – for protection, for short yardage, for everything. I, I think Brown profiles as a change of pace kind of explosive backup versus having the the veteran presence of Moss in there. What do you do when Samaj P. Ryan ends up back on this team? Uh that will be that will be very Vomit. He vomits. <laughs> yeah. Jason vomits. I will everywhere. no longer be embarrassed to love Moss because the Zach I will Moss, not. The Zach Moss history is so wild. I mean, we we've talked about Devin Singletary in New York. Devin Singletary lost the battle with Zach Moss in Buffalo. You gotta go back and remember that. Like Zach Moss was the one that kept Devin Singletary out the field. He seems to be beloved by these you know, we didn't like him. We thought he was slow and and Jason made it very vocal. But, like, Zach Moss has – he earned that role in Buffalo. Then he moves on. He's a backup, and he takes over the league. And now he goes to a great situation. Um, I I won't lie. I mean, I put a lot of stock in what Zach Taylor said about Chase Brown. He has shown a great deal of uh, – given him a lot of praise as far as um, what the expectation is. I'm mostly worried that there will be a, a committee of disappointment. Yeah, I mean that that's the truth. You don't have to be in one of the two camps where you're either Chase Brown or Zach Moss. You could also be in the third camp, which very well might be the right camp to be in, which is these two guys are going to platoon and and make it irrelevant. But Mike talks about how bad Joe Mixon was, how inefficient. Yeah. And it's like Joe Mixon was the running back 5 with all of his inefficiencies because the offense is good. They're going to pass to their running back. I think that will be I think that'll be Zach Moss. He's so late in drafts. So that's one of my two guys that I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed to love. And who's the other one? The other one, I'm hanging with Mr. Cooper, <laughs> Amari Cooper. This is uh, like I I hanging with Mr. Cooper. I think he's really really good. And the, I think the reason I'm embarrassed is I, just say, Des- I don't think that's an embarrassing statement at all. No, it's it's Deshaun Watson because yeah. I don't think Deshaun Watson is good. I I do not think he's good. I think he's lost it. You think he was good. I think he was and now he's not good. a good football player. And, um, yeah, Amari Cooper, you look at his 17-game pace with the five full games that Watson played last year, and it was – I mean, it was it was world-beater stuff. It was 95 for 1,632 yards and seven touchdowns. That was the guy he was looking for in the offense. And even when Deshaun Watson was playing putridly – he still found Amari Cooper because Amari Cooper is a really talented wide receiver. I don't think he's aged out. So I where he but every time, every time I'm on the clock, I'm like, do I really yeah, want to put I get it. the eggs in the basket? You would of have to Watson? watch Watson play quarterback in order to watch your wide receiver. Yeah, and I don't want to do that. Yeah, Amari Cooper is You could like uh, put your hand up. Cover, we'll cover that over oh. half the screen. I guess usually right the quarterback's from, in about the same spot. Just put yeah. a piece of tape on the screen. Yeah, you'll can see AI him. like blur him? You so you s- just see the ball come out of his like blur mark on the screen? You could see the offensive line, and then all of a sudden the ball just woo. What if we AI in Joe Flacco? Like it's the same play, but we just put Joe Flacco on the on the camera. Would that be – Yeah, because that was a good time. It was, but also, you know, uh, uh, Mari Cooper – he was good with both players, um, and the reason is because Amari Cooper is is super. He, he is a very very talented wide receiver. He's always open. He's always in the right spot. He's got great hands. And this depth chart, like I, I I know they're trying to fix it. Right, they go out and get Jerry Judy. Jerry Judy is not that good. He is just a guy. He was supposed to be this great, you know otherworldly wide receiver and he's not he is an average NFL wide receiver he's a starting caliber NFL wide receiver but Watson has his eyes set on Amari Cooper Amari Cooper T Higgins T Higgins okay H- Higgins is two <laughs> spots later than Amari Cooper I, I'm I, I'm 
big fan of T. Higgins. George Pickens or Amari Cooper? Amari Cooper. Uh, Terry McLaurin or Amari Cooper? Amari Cooper. Zay Flowers or Amari Cooper? Amari Cooper. Calvin Ridley or Amari Cooper? Amari Cooper. Rashi Rice or Amari Cooper? Rashi Rice. Okay. Um, it's not as bad as you thought it was. I yeah. am embarrassed to love <laughs> a player that has finished wide receiver 28, 21, 25, 14, and 28. 14? All right. I <laughs> am embarrassed to love Terry McLaurin this year. Um, I think it's going to be the year for Terry McLaurin. I'm also embarrassed to love Will Levis this year. And I think that Will Levis is, is – That one's way more embarrassing. Um, I think it would be kind of uh, impossible for me to be as bullish about Calvin Ridley without believing in Will Levis. I don't think – Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Bananarama himself, I think he's way better than people think he is. And I think you're going to see it this year. I think if you're in a two-quarterback league – and you're you're deciding how late to wait for that second quarterback, which is something that you know Mike loves to do, is to kind of push that uh, down the draft a little bit. I just like to feel alive. Yeah. Well, I look. Will Levis will make you feel alive. <laughs> oh yeah, he will. And yeah, never been so close to death. You know, we had drafting a, Will Levis. Tennessee was a different team last year. This yes. was Derrick Henry. This was Mike Vrabel. This was a disappointment of a season. It was also a season in which Will Levis took over halfway through the year. No off season, no practice, no Calvin Ridley. Um, to me, he's exciting. He is a, uh, he has the opportunity to come out and be a gunslinger. That's what you want to see. So, uh, is he dangerous? Horribly dangerous. What is he going to make some mistakes? Yeah. But, oh, I, yeah. but so does Jameis Winston and we love the ride. So Will Levis to me, I think he's sneaky. I think when you look at the very last, third of quarterbacks in ADP and you say can this player do anything for my team in the range of outcomes and like Derek Carr's range of outcomes right Bryce Young's range of outcomes mm -hmm. Bo Nix's range of outcomes Geno Smith's range of outcomes like to me Will Levis has some of the high like you look at him and Matthew Stafford like Stafford despite the weapons We've been on the ride for a really, really long time with Matthew Stafford. Like, Matthew Stafford spent the first seven weeks of last year almost repeating quarterback 15 every week. Like, Will Levis is going to have some games, man. He's going to have some four, three or four touchdown games this year. I'm, I'm booking it. Like he, his first game when he tricked us all and he goes out there and first game as a as a starter just throws for four touchdowns. He – he is a gunslinger. He is not afraid to throw the ball downfield. He has much better weapons this year in adding Calvin Ridley. So He was I, under pressure so and, much and, last year. And, not and, if you and ask he, him. Yeah, he had no idea. No, he had no idea. Uh, he can't see it. Um, but they, they did improve their offensive line. I, I don't mind taking a shot on Will Levis. I am curious, though, where he's going in drafts. Like, Would you rather have Baker Mayfield or Will Levis? Um, he, they're going – on the edge of undrafted territory yeah. in a regular redraft. Uh, two, two Levis QB is two league. spots behind. Um, I think I'd take Baker still. What about Deshaun Watson or Will Levis? Uh, that's a good one. Um, I would probably I think take, I'm going. I would take Watson because uh, despite, despite the um, frustration displayed, like, you know, he played a handful of full games and three of the five games he played, he was a top 10 quarterback yeah for fantasy so, he was all right you you would have to cover your eyes and watch it but he ended up okay uh but terry mclaurin you know we saw dj Moore emerge from the mist right this this kind of perpetual we know you're good but it doesn't matter list and there's certain players on that list dj Moore came out last year with justin fields at quarterback and redefined his story as a fantasy weapon. And McLaurin has four straight 120-plus target, 1,000-yard seasons. He just hasn't had the ability to, you know, put it together week after week. No Jahan Dotson, Diami Brown on the other side. We're figuring out Luke McCaffrey. We've got, like, there's one guy. Yeah, there there's is one, one guy, guy. And then there's a, big, Ertz. there's a big gap. Oh, man. And I believe in Jaden Daniels, obviously. He's a my guy. So these both have correlation, right? right. Like Jaden Daniels is a my guy. And so inadvertently, I love Terry McLaurin. Calvin Ridley's a my guy. And inadvertently, I love Will Levis. Um, I'm embarrassed because I've spent most of those five years 
telling you that McLaurin wasn't going to produce for you as there was hype going into every season. So, you know, we got to stay water with what you believe about these offenses. I think Washington is going to be a little bit of a better team than people think they will be. And I think McLaurin is, is that guy. He's a dog. He, he's going to go out and he's going to give you wide receiver one opportunities every week with a much better quarterback. And, um, you know, plus probably 24% target share yeah. in the offense. And I hope it comes together for him. I mean, the touchdowns have been a major problem. That's not something you generally get from a rookie quarterback. But you're telling me you can't get to six? You can't get to seven? If you get to seven touchdowns, which is well within the range of outcomes for a rookie quarterback, you're going to have a much, much better year than his ADP. He is going in the late sixth round right now. And he's also a player with great fatigue in the fantasy community, so I don't think people want to take him. Yeah, he seems like he'll be a wide receiver too. Let me this see who's season. going around him and who's sexier name wise. Okay. Pickens. Uh, I would I would probably take Pickens, but I would go much McLaurin sexier. There. Okay. Pickens is currently three spots higher in ADP. Um Keenan Allen. I'd go McLaurin. I'll take Terry. Yeah, I mean Christian Kurt. McLaurin. And then you've got to decide between McLaurin, number one, for Jaden Daniels or T. Higgins. T. Higgins. So, so that's that's a tough call. Uh, I, T. Higgins has – to feel like T. Higgins needs to be in this list for you, Jason. It's, yeah. He's just, I'm not embarrassed, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, I, I love T. Higgins. T. Higgins has 2,000-yard seasons. Last year was the disappointment with the um, only playing 12 games. But they're kind of similar. Higgins normally scores a touchdown or two more than McLaurin. Uh, he, he'll catch fewer passes. He'll get fewer targets. Yeah, I, I mean, you. It's uh, we we talked about this uh, last week of just whether or not wide receiver twos on good offenses are are worth it, and they're usually very good picks. Who should be most embarrassed about the names mentioned today, Al? I want to know your opinion because you've heard all the names. Who should walk out of here most embarrassed that this was put onto a podcast? I think I'd have to go with Mike. Yeah. Yeah, he went deep. Yeah, because I put myself out there. My, the players I talked about are, are Jaros. Why do you love them? I'm embarrassed. <laughs> I already told you yeah, why. No, that's, that's fair. <laughs> I, have, um, I have put my shame out into the world. Yeah, Man, I, I hope mean, Tank Bigsby can redeem himself <laughs> from last year. Yeah, you know what? And you don't get to be on the ride. That's You're banished. I, I will watch from afar. No, you are banished. Yeah, he's I, my, my guy. That's true. That's true. All right, let's jump into some mailbag. Bag. Bang, bang. Um, okay, uh, we have some questions here. Erica in Palm Beach, Florida. What's everyone's temperature on Brandon Cooks this year? It's a good question. I just saw him go in that 15th round as well. Uh, he's currently on my bench as a wide receiver for in redraft. I haven't heard anybody talk about him. And I was wondering if I should drop somebody, uh, drop him for somebody like Wicks or Mooney. So I wouldn't drop him for Mooney. I, I, I wouldn't drop him for Wicks either, honestly. I think he's in the, the same tier as those players. I think that like if, if everything works out for Brandon Cooks this year, he'll be he'll be a solid player. It's like it's just if you're gonna chase the upside where Dontavian Wicks, if it works for him, a lot of a lot of things have to happen on the chessboard. But if it works for Dontavian Wicks, then you're like, oh man, I stole a top twenty four wide receiver. Where I don't think Brandon Cooks, you're, he's not going to jump into that range. He'll just be a solid flex player. Yeah, and Brandon Brandon Cooks to me <clears throat> is a very good best ball pick. You know, if you look right. at how he's kind of converted into more of a touchdown guy, not a volume play. So if he gets a touchdown, you're happy. If he doesn't, his lows are really really low. Like last season. He finished as the wide receiver 36, but he had games of, you know, 5.7, 2, uh, 1.8, 1.2, 2.7, 3-point. Like, he's just not an integral part of the offense. So, you get the spike weeks when the touchdowns happen, but I don't want – I would rather have a guy at the end of my bench be more the Dontavian Wicks personally where – I'm, I'm going to move on from this player no matter what unless he comes out and says, oh, he he did level up. He is on the field. He is the guy that, you know, is the next big thing versus the, you know, used to be a thing. Um, 
I can keep either Kyron Williams, Aaron in Nashville writing in. I can keep Kyron Williams in round 10 or Sam Laporta in round 11. I've been going back and forth. Kyron. I think yeah. we'd all say Kyron yes. in that one. Uh, Logan in Utah. Hey, ballers, just wondering if you are avoiding players with the same bye week or avoiding onesies with the same bye week. Well, um, onesies being tight end and right. quarterback in most leagues. I mean, generally, I'm not drafting multiple onesies. There are we there are times when I'm going to have two quarterbacks if I take them very late. I I, I I mean, I imagine. But I don't really care. I think what he's asking is you, you draft multiple onesies every draft because you draft a quarterback and a tight end. And so because you don't have depth at those two uh, spots, okay. you would have to sign off the waiver wire so maybe you avoid having them on the same bye week because then you got to sign two guys. No, you, I, I, I'm not worried about I'm it. I'm not worried about that at all. I'm trying to grab the best players for the weeks they're on the field. And my roster is going to look so different. If this is not like a best ball league, if this is just my home league, my roster is going to look so different by week four than it did leaving the draft. That I, I don't know what my bye weeks are going to be by the time bye weeks start rolling around. Unless you spent up on the two onesies. That would be the one situation you, you might want to keep in the back of your head if you if you spent up on them both. But I'm not, I'm not really thinking about it either. Sure. I mean, obviously, if you spend up and you get that Mahomes-Kelsey stack – I promise they have the same Yeah, bi-week. that's a good point. <laughs> hey, we'll take a quick break and answer some more questions. All right, the next question comes in from Brandon. Have you ever left a fantasy draft where you were unsatisfied with your team and what did you think about it? Which Oh yeah. Of course. I was uh the auctioneer of an auction draft that I was <laughs> participating in and I that was impossible for me. That was I. I left that draft going. I, I don't. I don't know why I drafted any of these people. Generally, if it happens, it's because there was a player like in the middle of the draft that I want. That was my target. I'm not prepared properly for for them to be drafted, and then I tilt. And when you make a tilt pick right in the middle, it usually turns into a second tilt pick, and then you're upset with yourself in your draft so that's why you be ready be re it's okay if your target gets taken from you have the other players ready all right bob writes in from ohio uh where are your tier based draft rankings located yeah so the ultimate draft kit you can go to myudk.com if you have it that's like just a quick url so you can always pull up the udk um but all of our rankings by default in the ultimate draft kit are going to show up in their tiers based on your scoring setting. Yeah, you, you positional rankings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the, that's worth mentioning because people ask about, like, where are mm -hmm. the tiers in Dynasty? Where are the tiers in Top 200? Uh, Dynasty is so uh, – the reason we don't have tiers in Dynasty is because you can draft your team for about 100 different potential strategy types. So, mm -hmm. like, there's a there would be a different tier grouping if you were going to build a long-term team. There's a different tier grouping if you were to build a team to win tomorrow. Yeah, at some teams, Derrick Henry is an incredibly important dynasty asset. At some teams, he is a, a very expiring, not valuable dynasty asset. Uh, Jose writes in, Mike, uh, he says, Hey, ballers, love the show. What would be the biggest change in strategy between drafting in a 12-team versus a 10-team league? And I'm going to throw one more in there. Somebody had asked right. recently on Twitter about a 16-team league. So um, what's the biggest difference in strategy that you find between a very large league or a smaller league like 10 and 18? So the, the 10 and the 8s, that's where everyone's team, their starting lineup is going to be awesome. So you have to find the small edges, which is the easiest one is your quarterback and your tight end position. When you are in the larger teams, I'm a little more focused on – I, like I don't, I don't like the, the cost of spending an early round pick on a quarterback. Because depth, be, it, you yeah, lose because, it so quickly. Yes, and 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 then that might be a league where I'm more likely to take the two quarterbacks at the end. I'm taking, you know, I'm taking Jaden Daniels. I'm taking Jared Goff. Uh, just trying to find some upside at the position because I, I bypass it. But and, I mean, this may sound like common sense, but it's you need to be more informed about the NFL you need to be deeper in the weeds of paying attention to all these the cuts that are happening because there are there are there's movement happening right now in fantasy players it's not top usually top tier guys who are getting affected but it's those depth guys that are getting changed right now and you need to be on top of that news in a 
16 team league, suddenly you're talking about Josh Reynolds in Denver. Suddenly you're talking about Greg yes. Dor Greg Dorch in Arizona. Like those yes. are names that are going to be not just oh maybe I'm getting maybe it's a last round pick that gets lucky. No, these are like players you're probably playing. Mm -hmm. Like um, it does like that's a good point, Mike. I don't think we say that enough with the big team, um, the big leagues is just you need to go deeper. You're going to have to have more intel. Um, all right, website question from Garrett in Wyoming says, how many fantasy leagues are you guys in and how many of each kind? Yeah, I mean, it, it depends on – my number is always depending on what do you mean. Like, because <laughs> are these the leagues I really care about? Then there's like four. There's four leagues that I really care about. Well, I'm probably in six, seven, eight leagues total, um, but there's there's a big four. We try to keep it that way. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a hard thing to maintain, but I think this show's going to always benefit from us being dedicated and committed to a core small group of leagues where we are emotionally invested, like every one of you. And that's what we enjoy about fantasy. There's not a lot of fun to me about having every player on every single team in every single league. Mm-hmm. Because then, because I'm in twenty of them. Yeah, you know. And so this play that you know, is, oh, he got a touchdown. That that's good for me. That's bad for me. For every player across the league, I think seven or eight years ago, we both, uh, we we all started um, adding more and more and more leagues, and and we experienced that. And so we we've cut down, and we're trying to always be committed and dedicated to our primary leagues. And my my tip for people ask say, how do I know if I'm in too many leagues? If you get to Tuesday's waiver wire and you're not excited. Such a good point. If you're not excited to go into each and every league and be in the weeds, because wa waiver wires to really be successful, you have to have a, a view of the entire league. It's not just you know your team looking at what do you need. You have to be looking at what everyone else in the league needs because that's going to affect what you should bid. If you're in fab, that's going to affect when you know to – I, I'm burning the priority this week. So if you are not excited, you're in too many, if, caught him yeah, down. If I have to go into 20 different waiver wires oh, and man. cut Tank Bigsby in 20 different waiver wires. All right, that is going to do it for today's show. A reminder, the ultimate draft kit available right now for your weekend drafts, um, for your weekday drafts. I mean, people are drafting all throughout this week with the NFL starting next Thursday. So head over to ultimatedraftkit.com. Get yourself equipped to dominate your draft. Set that foundation for your season so you can go win a fantasy championship. We have the fantasy time machine this week on one of our episodes. Great, Scott. We've got uh, – I got that. Great, right. Scott. Thank you very much. Uh, we got another mock draft, our final mock draft of the uh, draft season, and then we've got a fantasy MVP episode, which is always very fun. And um, then next week, guess what? It's going to be football time. Oh, man. It's going to be football I, time. I can't freaking wait for football. I need the real thing. It's coming. It's coming very quickly. All right. Catch you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.